going back to what, what we were talking about in terms of, you know, the gold standard is supposed to restrain the government, and it never seems to do that, particularly when a war breaks out. I mean, going back to this book here, um, E. Michael Jones points out that when the Civil War broke out and Abraham Lincoln had to expand the money supply to pay for the war, he did so by borrowing $2.6 billion dollars. Um, which I'm not entirely sure who he borrowed it from. This must have been like a war bond to promise to pay at some point in the future. And then he got, um, uh, I guess, uh, supposedly Congress's support to um, issue $500 million of just money that's just out there. These, these are the greenbacks, right? And uh, e. Michael Jones, I'll quote him right here, this reckless expansion of the money supply brought about an inflation that was entirely predictable. Within three years of the war, prices rose by 74%. But then he turns around and says, okay, well, prices rose by 74%, but at, right after that, the economy was freaking booming. Now, I do have a problem first with... with Sorry, when was this? Uh, when the, was this? The Civil War, 1864. Oh, okay. Oh, no, 1861. Excuse me. Somewhere, somewhere. I'm yeah, in. wars are bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I've, I've got two. One thing to say about what his uh, uh, Dr. Jones analysis and then finish up the point that well, I, I started here is that, first of all, um, I, I don't like the, the issue of saying, OK, they printed the money. Therefore, things immediately inflated because of the money printing. OK, that might be a con- contributing factor, but also keep in mind, you've got a war going on. Yeah, yeah. So, right. We, we, we've talked yeah. about this is that military spending is by definition inflationary, right? Because you're spending a bunch yeah. of money. Um, you're, you're taking people out of the productive economy, sending them to go die and sending them to well, destroy stuff and, yeah. and uh, creating things that aren't going back into the economy. Right. But, and you're losing you're losing a bunch of young males, which are part of your labor force. Exactly. So you so you you destroy the productive capacity of the economy. That's how you get an inflation for sure. Right. I wouldn't even you know I don't even necessarily think the money printing itself would have had anything or that much to do with it. Right. But rather it, it it's rather like we saw in Weimar Germany, for example. It's actually a symptom of the prices shooting up so much that now all the services and goods that the government had to purchase are, have also gone up in price. So now they need to print more money to buy them. And there's actually research that has been done on that, where the timing of the printing versus the price increase is actually inverse to what a lot of people right. think today. Right. And then to finish the point where we say, okay, does this constrain the government? Well. When it's a war, they just say, "Okay, forget that," because we we want to we want to have a war. Well, and then the outcome of the war is terrible. But on the flip side, the economy actually improves. What where it's like, okay, do we have to have a war in order to improve the economy here? <laughs> um, can, can we learn the lesson that the economy can be uh, improved without the war? I mean, this is like the irony of this chapter here is that the, the wars are showing that. The, the gold standard is what's ki- killing the economy. And then he, he um, to, to make matters worse, e. Michael Jones points out is that during the war, when all these um, b- uh, government bonds are purchased to, in quotes, finance it, um, despite the fact that it, um, Lincoln showed that it could just be financed itself. It does, this doesn't need to happen. But they still send, you know, print these war bonds. The, the holders of the war bonds are therefore, after the war, incentivized to deflate the currency to pre-war levels because that means the money that the government is going to pay them is going to be worth more. So, there, again, like the, this, the entire thing set up to, to be the worst of all worlds, no matter which way you look at it. Because, okay, we have the gold standard. That puts us in, in artificial austerity. Okay, we're going to have a war and kill everybody, but the economy is going to do well. Okay, now that the war is over, stop the economy doing well so the people holding the war bonds can make more money. Um, and, I mean, this boils, boils down to the argument that he's making throughout the book is that usury – is just um, the the siphoning off of the surplus of labor without actually deserving it, and I think that this is a perfect example of what he's talking about. <laughs>